Hey everyone, this is an Alcohol Free Life channel where we're learning to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a second, can you please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to smash that like button. My name is Terry G and let's get to the video. Okay, let's, let's do it. What I want to talk about today, I want to talk about step seven in the program of recovery when it comes to the AA program. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? And it kind of goes like this. Humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. First of all, I want to start off by saying that if you've made it this far in the 12 steps, I say kudo to you, congratulations. Because a lot of us don't make it this far because the old roadblocks, the old normal roadblocks and that's step four and step five really, really hurt a lot of people and it makes people afraid and they back off from the 12 steps. So if you're on step seven, fantastic, good for you. You are going, starting to work this recovery part, the rebuilding of your life. In step six and seven, we start doing that, rebuilding our lives. And step seven is going to help you remove those shortcomings. First of all, I just wanna give you a few key things you need to think about when you're starting a step. The first one is humility. We need to develop humility when we start doing step seven. Another one is you need to get rid of the word perfection. We are not perfect. And when it comes to character defects or shortcomings or flaws, whatever you want to call them, believe me, we are not perfect. Every human being has character defects. There are the seven deadly sins and we all have them. Alcoholics, addicts, or just people who are normies. We all have it. Okay. We really do. So not feeling that you have to be perfect when you're doing these steps. Another thing is don't stop. Keep it going, be committed to changing your life using step seven, be committed and learn how to pray and let go a little bit if you're into that. Because for myself, it helped me a lot. So what are my, what are my character defects? Just for an example, no, not really example, these are what it was, these are it. The first one is anger. Anger was blaring for me, it was terrible. And I say anger because it makes it sound sexy, but I was raging on people. I was scaring people. I needed to do something about my anger. So anger was my number one defect that I needed to start working on. The second one was jealousy or envy. And I was really jealous of people. So jealous of people, places and things, it caused me to be angry. It caused me to feel fear. It caused, had uh, to do with my self-worth. And a lot of problems I had with, with being jealous of other people and places and things. Another one was greedy. I was really greedy when it came to money and my stuff. I was very, very greedy. So I had to work on greed. And the last one was procrastination. I had to actually do things for myself. I mean, procrastination, I, I'm not a lazy person. I go to work all the time. When I was in recovery, I did work. I was very active. I went to meetings and stuff. But when it came to my own well-being, like doing the steps, doing the fourth, doing the fifth, going to therapy, doing things that I knew were good for me and being told by other people, you should do this, Terry. I always put that off. And that caused me a great deal of harm. And I relapsed twice because of that, ended up in the jail once because of procrastination, not looking, taking care of business. And that I have to watch out for when it comes to my daily affairs to this day. Don't let things slide, Terry. Get off your butt and do it. If you can not do it, ask for help from someone else. So they were my fav they were my my favorite four. Anger, jealousy or envy, greed, and procrastination. So what do you do with those? What do you do? What is the opposite? What's the opposite of anger? And that's basically what I practice. What is the opposite of anger? Well, I had to learn to be patient and love and tolerance towards other people. I had to see the other side of people, let people be the way they are. I had to practice that and not being so jumpy or firing up all the time. Give people an opportunity. You know, you hear it all the time, step back and just let it be. Sit with that anger, don't respond to it. Love and patience towards people, places and things and tolerance towards other people. People are exactly the way they are. No one's out to get me or cause me harm, most of the time anyways. But I also had to go to therapy. So love and tolerance and patience, that's what I work on when it comes to anger. I have no, I have no uh, reason 
to lose it on somebody or make somebody afraid of me or abuse somebody verbally. I have a big voice. I'm six foot two, I weigh 210 pounds. And when I start you know, flagging my arms and doing that kind of stuff, I can intimidate people, I really can. I put fear into people and I made them feel very uncomfortable. And those behaviors, surprising enough, carried on into my recovery until I understood what exactly was going on. So anger was a big one, it was a big one. The next one is jealousy. I was jealous of people if they made decisions and they kept to it, believe it or not. Because I was such a drunk and a drug addict that I couldn't keep my word was no good. I was jealous of people who had houses, who had nice cars, had good relationships. Here's me in my 30s, I couldn't do any of that. And I was jealous of them, I really was. Well, the reason I didn't have a good car was obvious. I spent all my money on booze. The reason I didn't have a good relationship, because I, I, I didn't know how to have a relationship with myself or anybody. So I had to learn those kind of things. I had to learn to stop being jealous. People worked for what they got in their lives and I had to start being, stop being so jealous. I'm good enough just the way I am. So I had to work on, again, love and tolerance and, and be grateful for the things that I have in sharing in the joy that other people have, things they have. A lot of people out there worked from for their stuff, worked for their nice cars. A lot of people came from functional homes or functional backgrounds. I didn't but I have no reason to feel jealous about what they have. I have a lot more than a lot of people, even when I first came into re recovery, but I was so jealous of other people, I had to, 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 to really get a handle on that. I wasn't jealous when it came to my partners, that kind of jealousy. So I really had to get honest with myself and look at why am I so jealous of these people, why? Well, it, well, another one was I was comparing myself always to them too. But jealousy was a big one. It really was. Another one was greed. Greed played havoc on my life. And the one thing about greed that it how it affected me, it made me feel that I never had enough. It made me feel that I wasn't grateful for my life. I wasn't grateful for what I had. Greed was terrible, played havoc on me. It made me fear the future that I wasn't gonna have enough money. And we're talking that kind of greed. I have a problem to this day sometimes sharing, believe it or not. I get better at it, I'm much better at it now. And I've talked to my sponsor about this one. He says, Terry, you know, why don't you start giving some of that money away? Then don't get me, I don't have a lot of money. I'm just an average earner. But it played havoc on me. I was always afraid of losing it. So I was afraid of losing stuff. You know, I'm, I was an alcoholic living basically on the street. Now I got some sort of a quasi normal life. I don't want to help anybody else financially or give stuff away. I want to keep it all to myself. And that was a real awful way to live. So what I started to do is actually give the charities. Well, it was only $25 a month, but I did that. I started giving some of my stuff to other people. And I still do it to this day. I make a point of it, giving money, giving up my time, asking you know, if someone needs a ride, give people a ride. I started giving my stuff away to people, helping other people in charitable ways. And that really helped me with greed, it really did. I have no reason to be a miser or be a Scrooge or be greedy. I really have no reason. Everybody can give something to another human being to help them out. And my way of doing it is very small, but I do it. And my partner, Brenda, always says, Terry, I can't believe you do that stuff. Well, I do it for two reasons. I like doing it now. And plus it helps me be more appreciative to what I have. So I work on that on a daily basis. Not on a daily basis. That's not one of my blurring defects, but it comes around. It really doesn't. I have to back it off, love and tolerance, do a little prayer, a little mindfulness, and understand I have enough. I really do. If I have seven apples, and I only need six, I can give one apple away and not worry about it. And that's sort of the way I go about it. And the other last one is procrastination. I'm not a lazy person, I'm not. I go to work, I do all those sort of things daily, I clean my house, those sort of things. I do all that kind of standard stuff. But my procrastination came, I hope I'm pronouncing the word properly because I cannot pronounce it. It's a tongue twister for me. If I'm not pronouncing it properly, just 
leave a comment in, in the in the comments below but the ones i'm talking about the procrastination that i experienced was and i still experience when it comes to looking after myself like going to the gym it's very healthy for me going to see a counselor looking after my teeth doing all these sort of things working the program you know i relapsed twice in the program because i wouldn't do anything i relapsed at nine months i relapsed at 14 months in the 14th month one I was in jail, I got thrown in jail for uttering threats to somebody, believe it or not. That's how crazy it was because I wasn't willing to do anything to help myself. So I have to watch for that. When it comes to my mental health, my physical health, my spiritual and emotional health, I have to make sure I'm looked after. I look after business for me because if I don't look after myself, all those other character defects are blaring. They start blaring. I have a number of years of sobriety and I still work on anger. I still work on jealousy. I still work on greed. I still work on procrastination. The one thing that is different nowadays that is way different from the olden days, say 10 years ago or you know, 25 years ago, is these defects are not blaring. They don't cause me to have terrible relationships anymore. Sometimes they do. But generally speaking, my life is very manageable and, and very good. And I still have those character defects. And I still ask to, uh, to get rid of my shortcomings when it comes to those flaws or character defects in me. So we need to find what our character defects are in step six. You need to do that. And the way you do that, I'm going to talk about that in another video. But and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, and I'm talking about step seven. I guess I should talk about step six, but I will talk about six, step six. And if you know your character defects, it's usually the opposite. We need to practice restraint. We need to practice humili humility. And we need to practice patience. And remember that we are not perfect. And you will never be perfect. You never. I make mistakes. I get angry. I get greedy, I show jealousy sometimes, I do all those things, but it's not like it used to be. It's spiritual progress, not spiritual perfection. We are human beings. We are full of flaw, but we are full of opportunity. We're full of the grace and we're full of love and kindness and we have the ability to do that. And the more that we work on these character defects, it'll boost our self-esteem, you might even get a job promotion. It'll help you with your relationships, with your partners, with your family, your work relationships, your friend relationships. Anything you want, it'll help you in those areas because these defects will not be showing their ugly head all the time and causing you to have bad behavior or even if we don't get those defects under control, it can lead to relapse. It really can because we won't be able to live with ourselves and no one will live with, that, with us either. So that's it, folks. Step seven. Step seven in a nutshell. This is A for Beginners video, okay? I hope you enjoyed it, okay? If you did, leave a comment below. If you didn't, leave a comment below. But can you all do me a favor? Can you please subscribe to my channel? You can go in the 12 and 12 book of Alcoholics Anonymous, the 12 and 12, and read step seven in its full. Okay, you can do that. But the main thing is, it's an action step. We may need to take action and do it, okay? Just get out there and do it and you'll see the results. You will not believe it, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. Thank you very much for stopping by. Remember, we're, not, we're all in this together. Stay safe, stay sober, ciao for now over and out bye bye